Hello and welcome to Cracking the Cryptic and thank you very much to those who have congratulated me on winning the Times Sudoku Championship two days ago on Saturday. Um, I was very proud to do it but I think I was very lucky as well. Um, it's important to note that on the four final puzzles um, Tom Collier who's contributed to Cracking the Cryptic was um, he finished almost six minutes faster than me um, and certainly at that stage I saw him hand in and I assumed that um, at best I was going for second place um, but it turned out his last two numbers that he'd entered in the final puzzle that he was solving um, he put in wrong so very unfortunately by the rules of the competition um, there's not just a small penalty for error there is a um, effectively you're marked as having only got three out of four puzzles right so you can't beat anyone who got all four puzzles right within the time so um, he wouldn't even have finished second or third so I'm sorry for Tom it's an it's an unfortunate way to fail to win and I have finished first ahead of him in the past and not won in exactly or well, not exactly the same way because I hadn't solved it, the puzzle quite as correctly as he had this time but uh, there we go. That sometimes happens quite often, actually. In this final, it happens that the first finisher is not the winner, and uh, somebody else benefits from that. Um, it was really nice to meet people at the event who had been watching the videos and um, were enjoying them. Thank you very much for introducing yourselves. If you did, um, that was great. And I do encourage people who watch this series to try and enter the the Times National Sudoku Championship. It's the only one I know of in, certainly in the UK, possibly in Western Europe, for just classic Sudoku, so no variants, just the traditional puzzles. I thought I'd show you what the what you get. Basically, you turn up into, um, you register at the event, and then come 11 o'clock, you're invited into a room where you choose one of about 150 desks at each of which is a booklet like this which if you were to open it which you're not allowed to yet you would find contains four Sudoku puzzles to do um, and you sit down and you wait for some preliminary and, um, rules and then you get to start on those there's an hour in which you can solve those first four puzzles whenever you finish you kind of suddenly hold up your number so that everybody can see it um, and some invigilators take down the finishing order there's then a second preliminary after a break of an hour that lasts another hour and then the organizers add up the um, finishing order positions of the all corrects and see who qualifies for the 12 places in the final where the same situation happens you get a booklet that says grand final instead um, I think Tom qualified first and I qualified second so you know it could look as though it was just between us but in fact there were some very good competitors in the final who uh, who were serious threats um, who have often come second or third um, or even one at the fourth so nice to finish first this was the article in the paper um, not very long but um, very kind to me and it did mention Tom's finish which was unfortunate for him um, great fun what I thought I'd show you today now was the um, I think it's the first puzzle of the first preliminary so you open the book the first preliminary one booklet and you get this puzzle and that looks like this and Simon's shown you um, how let's just cover my face then, how um, how difficult with that with the notation we've recommended the first puzzle in the final was and I think it was just that one that was really very difficult um, so my mission today is to show you that our notation generally works for any puzzle that they're publishing or for most of them let's put it that way so we can sort of start off by noting that down here in these three boxes we've already got two ones placed third one has to be in the final column so it has to be there similarly for twos across the middle there's one in row four and one in row five this must be the one in row six now this is the one bit where you 
I think it really helps straight away to switch to um, the mode of looking for, so far we've been looking for, to be guided by what was already in the grid, as it were. So we found some twos and we looked for two, we looked for the last two. Here, if you can now spot that in this cell that I'm pointing at here, there is only one possibility, what we would call a, I think it's a naked single at this point, and that's a seven, that really advances things. In fact, you can take that principle down a bit further in this same column, and in this cell down the bottom, now there's only one possibility. And that really is a kickstart to solving this puzzle. Um, we can, I think, do some work across the bottom with the one that we placed there we, and the one there. We can actually also see there's a three there and three there. And that gives us um, the combination of one, three in those two cells. And a combination of two numbers distributed across two cells is quite powerful because those cells are blocked off for, in this case, eights. So if an eight can't go there, and because of this eight it can't go there, it goes in there. We now know that across here we have 275. Um, there are some verticals that are impossible there, but it's useful just to know that to start with. Across the next row above, the only place for a seven is here, and that gives us another pair of five, six. Um, in here, sorry, I'm click on the cell. Um, we know that eight is up here somewhere. Um, and now in this box, we have two, three, seven, five, eight, one. The six has to come down here. And we've got a pair of four and nine up here. Um, and with five, four, nine, one, three, six, we now know that the two is up here in a pair with the eight. So we've got a lot of these powerful pairs and decent numbers filled in. So it's really helpful. Now looking at this nine that we've just put in last, that's cutting out this box at the top here. These two are eliminated by this nine. So nine in this box at the top is either there or there. And that means that nine can't be there or there. Because of these two nines and this nine, the only cell left in this box is there. Um, and similarly with threes, there's a three looking straight up here, so those three are eliminated, and a three looking along there. So three in this box is either there or there, and now three up here has to be in there. So we're getting quite a lot done in this box that uh, at first didn't have much in it. That three that we've just put in fixes this three one pair here. Um, we can now see one and four eliminated from the center cell down here, and they're eliminated from that cell there. So one and four, uh, sorry, one and four are in a little pair in there. That's still just as powerful. And that means that one and four in this box are in the middle row. And because of the one below, they must be in that order. And now we're really rocking on with some eliminations from the work we did earlier. Um, and the whole, whole puzzle is getting a lot easier just because of that one spot near the start. I mean, I have to say, I, we're told that the puzzles were fiendish. That's what the article says. But if I'm honest, I would say the, the one Simon showed you is at least super fiendish and maybe even harder. Whereas this one, it doesn't feel any more than what the Times would normally call difficult to me. But maybe that's because a good spot at the start has such a dramatic effect. Obviously, one can't really do a control experiment to, to work that one out. So 175 are down there. That fixes this pair. And this pair is fixed as well. Um, now, we don't quite know which of seven or five is going down there, but we can probably do something up here. We're looking for four. It could be there or there. Ah, oh, nine has been resolved here. And that's resolving two. Um, this one is now eight, and this is a seven, six pair. These pairs just constantly coming up in this puzzle being really helpful. So we can finish the top row now. Um, 
six nine one eight two seven five. The seven now has to be here, and that fixes the other items in row two. That's handy. Nine one two three seven six five. That eight and four are resolved by the eight below. That's fixing the four and one. Now we know how this five seven two are resolving themselves. And now we're just finishing the final column, and then we just have to pair up, resolve these pairs that we were left with earlier. And that gets this puzzle done. And I mean, this, I think, in practice, if you, if you make that early spot just in fact of that seven, this is kind of a less than five minutes puzzle easily if... if if you're on form and used to kind of filling it in quickly. So just a quick talk through um, puzzle number one of the of the championships. We may return to some of the other puzzles from from the championships in further further uh, videos. But thank you very much for watching. Again, thank you for the congratulations I've had and, and the good wishes. Um, very kind of you. The crossword championship comes up in four or five weeks from now. We'll see how that goes as well. Thank you very much for your time, and I uh, hope to see you again on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye now.